Okay, Judy. We're going to work on transitions this week and a lesson about thirds. So, first, I'm going to get into. I got a haircut while, while I was uh, in between me teaching you and now doing this video, and it looks pretty good. All right, so working on the transitions, we're going to go from line to line. We're just going to do. Measure two to measure three, stop. And then you'd work on that over and over again. So when you're working on that, um, I want you to go from this part, one, two, three, four, right? And then straight into the next line. Uh, what is the next part? Yeah. Just like that, okay? So you're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. Over and over again, you do that part. And a little slower, probably, might be smarter. Over and over and over again. Just work on that transition, trying to get those two lines to communicate with each other. Whatever tempo works best for you, I think, is probably smart at this point. If you notice, I do a lot of sliding on this. I'm going. It feels good to me. That's how I like to play. So if you hear that and you like it, all I'm really doing is keeping my fingers pushed into the wood as I get to this part. But it's not necessary. I just don't want you to hear that and think I'm doing something different than you are. Um, yeah, that's measure two to measure three. Then I want you to go from measure four back up to measure one. This one's a little bit trickier. Um, okay, so it's... Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, like that. All right, so we'll do that one again. Uh, it's been a while since I looked at this. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Just like that. You do that one over and over and over again. Okay. Okay, that's measure four to measure one. Then I want you to work on measure four to measure five. Okay, so going from line two to, what am I doing? It's backwards for you. Measure four down here to the next line. Uh, so what we just did all over again, you're gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three, and then go straight down into the next line which is this, um, okay, so let's do that one again, okay, one, two, three, okay, that transition is difficult, let's slow it down just a little bit, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, that's the difficult part. Practicing on from this E chord. Uh, it might be worth working on. Because remember, the transition all happens in that split second. You're going from here to here. Right? Look how fast. Right? You don't have to do that fast, but that's what's happening here. The hard part is getting from that E chord to this F shape. A chord that's on the third line there. So that's the next thing you would do. And then I want you to work on going from the pa first page to the first measure of the second page. And then that's it. That's all I want you to do with these transitions. Okay? So you're going from, what is this part? This is going to be, uh, yeah, one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do that one again. This is the end of page one going into page two. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's it. That's all you gotta do. Now, let's look at the other part of the lesson. By the way, if you do that, it's gonna be awesome. That first page is gonna be fantastic. Just work on trying to get from, all you wanna do is have your brain start communicating that once you're done with this, you're, you're going right into it, and just as if they were right next to each other. That's what we're working on, just getting that transition done. All right, the next thing I want you to start noticing is just a little teeny thing I want you to think about 
is that how thirds stack on top of each other from string to string, okay? And the best way to look at it is to, to put our second finger on the note A, on, to use these middle two strings, okay? So on the fourth string, we're gonna play A. So D, E, F, G, A, right there on the seventh fret, okay? Put your middle finger, and I want you to notice that if I go up from the first of the scale degree, so A, up to B, up to C sharp, that's the major scale you're actually going up two whole steps, right? Well, that's that same note is this same note here. That plays a major third above that root A, A, C sharp. But this is what's important. This is your major third going from one string to the next, the exception being between the third and the second string, because we know that's all wacky. But for the most part, whenever you go from one string to the next, this is what a major third looks like. So if you're playing a note and you want to play a third above it, that's what you play, major third. And sometimes it beats going like this. You just go. It's just kind of pretty. And when we're playing chorale stop, chorale styled compositions, it's easier to play those voicings. You can always find it. If the melody is A and you want to play the third above it, just grab it. Okay. But it's not always going to be a major third. Sometimes it will be a minor third. Okay. Just take this note A again. And look, look what happens when I when I play a minor third above A instead of a major third. That's a major third. Here's a minor third. Okay? One and a half steps, three frets. Well, if you notice, major third, minor third. It just went the third went down one fret. The difference between a major third and a minor third is one fret. Okay? Well, it's the same here. Major third. Now this is awkward, I'm going to just do it with my finger right now. I'm going to take my first finger and just stretch it back one fret. Just so you can see that, okay? It's the same note. Okay, but the way we do that is by, let's replace that root note with our third finger and it's easier to reach that minor third. So what you should get out of this is that the shape of a minor third looks like this, okay? It's the next string up, but two frets back. And the shape of a major third is one string up, one fret back, and it looks like this. Major third, minor third. Okay? That is all I really want you to get out of this lesson this week, but I want to show you what I'm doing here. If I take that same note, that same root note, A, B, C sharp, D, I can play a major third on the root and the fourth. And the five. And back down to the root. Okay, it's easy to find that way. I always know where the next note, the third above it, is going to be. I just find the note here, play a third above it. Find it here, four, five. Okay? In between, we've got these other notes. The two and the three. Well, they don't get major, major thirds. It would sound like this. Not the same thing. Okay, listen to the difference when I play them. Major third on the one. Minor third on the two. Minor third on the three, major third on the four, major third on the five. Okay, um, it's just to give you some, another way to look at notes on, and how they stack up really pretty on your music and how we can use them um, when we're playing some of this choir type music. Okay, I just want you to get the concept of it. Notice that my finger, my root finger changed. I switched it to my ring finger to play that bigger space of the minor third. But for the most part, you're just riding up along those strings. If you get the concept of it this week, I'll be very happy. If not, we'll go over it again next week. Have a good one.